What is going on, everybody? It is Triple Crown 24 back today with a new card show recap video. Today's show, I did not update my banner. I guess I just realized that now. Uh, was in the Cincinnati, Ohio area once again for normal. So a little bit of a, a local show, which is definitely nice in today's climate with how high gas prices are. Uh, this show I was going to, to buy because I'm going to be setting up the following day. I don't think you guys will probably see this till Monday. Uh, but it didn't really work out that way. Uh, I did a lot of selling. In fact, I had my best sales day ever at a show. And ironically enough, it was at a show that I wasn't even set up at. So I thought that was unusual. Uh, typically, it doesn't go like that. Typically, when I, I'm bringing my stuff, it's to trade. But today, I just was able to work out some deals with some people who were looking to buy. So that's not to say I didn't buy. I did I had a decent amount, uh, taking a bit of a different strategy. I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but uh, <laughs> that's that's for a different video. So my overall impressions of the show, it seemed a bit slower today than what is normal for this show. It's This show is very hit or miss. Uh, when it's hot, it's hot. And when it's not, it's not. And today it didn't seem like there was too much foot traffic. But from what I can understand from the dealers, a lot of them were saying that they were having very good days. So. I guess you could have 100 people there and only have 10 of them buying, or you could have 25 people there, but they're all wheeling and dealing and spending money. That's not actual figures, but just to give you an idea. Uh, and it, it seemed like there was quite a bit of cash flow going around the room. So let's move over to the pickups, shall we? Uh, lots to show off today. I did get in a stack of cards in the mail too, so I brought those with me for the sake of trading. But I picked up my first deal of the day was a good little tone setter. Uh, I picked up two cards just from a dollar box, and I only had one one dollar bill on me, so I the guy gave it to me for a dollar. Um, this Trout Bazooka Comics from Heritage this year, and then a 2012 top, so second year Trout. I just that uh, sure I'll I'll take that for a dollar. Uh, anytime you're willing to offer it. So, next up was a stack. Uh, these two were ten bucks total. Beltray Gold Refractor 2017 Bowman Chrome, numbered one of fifty, and then Trey Turner. That is the magenta, numbered to twenty-five from Topps Fire. Nothing too crazy there, but just some low-numbered parallels that I thought looked sharp, especially the Beltray being one of fifty. I thought that was a nice little touch. The next stack was, I got to say, this one caught me by surprise. So I was going through this box and kind of looking, and I didn't see any prices or like a, a general marker on the outside of the box when I was going through the stack. But then I noticed that up in the top corner, most of these had a little number on them, and that was the price. So a lot of people were confused by that, including myself. I bought it, you know, it made sense once I saw it, but... At first, I couldn't see this, so all these were prices, Mark. I ended up getting this whole stack plus the last card I'll show you for uh, 35 bucks, and it, it just goes to show you. I, I always hear this, that you got to get there early in order to be able to get the good deals out of the value boxes, and that is not always true. It Are the odds less likely as the show goes on? Of course, but sometimes you can find stuff if you're willing to dig, and this I bought these probably an hour and a half, two hours into the show. So if that tells you anything, I mean, these these were still in there and they hadn't been picked out yet. But uh, Bobby Wood Jr., 2019 Elite X3. He doesn't have too many cards in 19 since they held him out for 2020 Bowman, the springtime Bowman release. So it's cool to pick up, I guess, technically a first year wit. Uh, McCutcheon Relic, this was priced at a dollar from Tribute. Why not? And then just some guys who have been hot lately. Uh, and these were all a dollar so paul blackburn is pitching outstanding baseball for uh oakland this year base tops chrome auto and a refractor nothing crazy here but still this is a case hit auto from finest you usually get one maybe two if you're lucky insert autographs in a case so this is the finest first it is tyler austin not the biggest name that you could get from any of the inserts <clears throat> excuse me but for a dollar I'll, I'll take a, a tougher insert auto uh shout out to eric 
little dick love lady. I had to get that. Uh, Kyle Martin, Tots Chrome Update, Tree Fitty, three of fifty, <laughs> autograph, uh, gold refractor. I just I love the gold refractor. So if I see one autograph or not, regardless of the player, I usually pick them up just because I think they're cool. Uh, this one was a solid player too, which which added to it. Zach Grinky, uh, twenty one of fifty, which is actually his jersey number. So I just noticed that right now. That's pretty sweet. Rowdy Telez, who has been one of the saviors for my fantasy baseball team this year in the, the YouTubers uh, fantasy baseball league. My team has severely lacked power until we picked this guy up and uh, he's been, he's been a big help. So this is again, finest first auto. This is the blue version of 150. This was one that I thought was, uh, I was very shocked to see this Taylor Ward who's having an outstanding year for the angels. A big reason why they are uh, more competitive this year than I have been in years past. So Leather and Lumber Auto 99. Kadeem Carey, autograph from Select. Not the biggest name. He didn't really work out too well for the Bears, but number to 20, Select. Why not? And then this was the card. The dealer, I want to say this one was marked at 20 bucks, and these were all 17 in the stack, so we ended up making the deal for 35 I was trying to hold it off camera there, but I kind of spoiled it. This guy I, is extremely popular. At a lot of the shows I go to, I don't know exactly why, because he, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he played college ball at Vanderbilt, which isn't too far away, but it's still like five hours to get to Vanderbilt from here, maybe even a little bit more. And he plays for the Jags. Uh, so I don't know exactly why this guy is so popular around the area, but he is. Uh, LaVisca Chenault, this is the gloves from Immaculate, if any Immaculate, it ain't me, uh, number to 15. And it's got the Nike swoosh on it there. So a lot of these glove parallels, they have a lot of cool patterns. In fact, this guy had some more glove cards in his boxes that were priced at more so like the $5 price point of some guys he didn't really make. And then I was kind of kicking the tires on, on those. I decided to leave them behind. But this one right here was uh, when he said this was 20 bucks. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Especially considering how expensive <laughs> Immaculate is. You know, that was one of those that like, I'm not gonna even try to you know wiggle down the price on that one. Just just give it to me. So that was fun. Um, said I had my best sales day of uh, ever. I had a show, uh, and part of it was making some trades. So a couple of the trades I made here. I got some. This is from a dealer who I had a fantastic conversation with. We talked about a whole bunch of different things. One of them here was this Acuna. So I swapped him a card straight up and then was able to sell him uh, my Tyrese Maxi red, white, and blue PSA 10 for a price that I was comfortable with. I got what I needed to get and it left him plenty of room to, to give someone else a good deal. So if he is able to to move that around, that's that's kind of the best kind of deals that I like to make. You know, when I when I go to these shows, I do I like to win the trades? Absolutely. But I really do like it when the other person wins too, because it means that you know, hopefully we'll be able to hook up again for a deal down the road. I don't want anyone to feel like they got screwed making a deal with me. Now, sometimes things happen with certain players where that's how it ends up. Um, those are things that are outside of my control, but what I can control it, I, I like to try to make it a win-win deal for both sides, or at least try to figure out, you know, what they're going after, get inside their head a little bit and, find out what what's important to them so uh, i was very happy with, with all the trades i made today there were some fantastic conversations i felt like all the deals were win-win for both sides and that's really the best kind of trades like i said so uh here's the akuna tops sp an apsa 10 holder always have liked that card and then forgetting what i've already showed off <laughs> uh same one from this dealer i ended up uh, kind of after we made our first couple of deals, I went back and got this one. This is essentially the same price that it is raw right now. And I know what the condition is in an SGC nine. I get that it's probably not the preferred holder for many, which that's fine. If SGC is not your thing, I, I personally like them a lot. I continue to like them more and more as I do more business with them as a group submitter. Uh, but overall, just <laughs> I, I would rather take a foil card like this. That can be tough in terms of condition, even sometimes out of the pack, 
a lot of these I see dinged up and know that it's been looked over by someone who looks over cards for a living. Uh, and I trust their opinion to kind of give me a little bit of extra reassurance. Of course, I'm going to do my own research. I'm going to look it over myself and make sure that I think it's accurately graded. And I think it is. So that was one that uh, just couldn't pass up. That's the third home field advantage I've, I've owned at this point. And I think I had, is it Judge? The first one I got was a long time ago now, but I have a Soto that is off at PSA, and now I have that one as well. So uh, another partial cash, partial trade. I departed with my Joe Burrow RPA in this trade for a guy, another gentleman who I had a great conversation with, and uh, hopefully we'll do more business with him. I just talked about a lot of great things. Uh, well, I don't want to extend this video into an hour-long video. I usually go long enough on these things already, but it was fun. So uh, two autographs that I got back from him. I got a substantial amount of cash coming back to me and then some cards that I wasn't into as much, but the Burrow was, was the centerpiece of the deal. So... Getting the cash was nice um, to kind of, you know, it was almost as if I was selling the burrow and then I was able to get kind of these cards on top of it as kind of a, the cherry on top. So that was nice. But uh, Steve Young from Spectra, on-card autograph, really great signature on this one. It's not streaky or anything. Sometimes these Spectras, they're slippery on the surface and they can smudge kind of easy. Sometimes they... Uh, go a little bit wild with signatures. This one very well kept, and it is uh, nine of fifteen. So I forget what they call these things. I think this is like a hyper or something. I don't, I don't know what the parallel is. I just thought it looked cool, so I went after it. Um, sometimes that's just I'm not really looking for the specific parallel. I want it because it looks cool. And then this one here, I like for a couple different reasons. This is one of my favorite contenders designs. It's the 2017 one. It's one that is uh, very popular these days on the football side of things because of Patrick Mahomes. And I guess someone on the basketball side with Jason Tatum, I don't consider contenders as sought after in basketball. It's just, it's never been really something that I see a lot of people talk about, but this is a historic playoff ticket. So a little bit of a throwback here. And it's got Anthony Davis in the New Orleans Hornets. Uh, uniforms there before they became the Charlotte Hornets <laughs> again. And I don't know what it is, but I've always loved those teal Hornets uniforms, regardless if it was in Charlotte or New Orleans. I just thought they always <laughs> looked incredible. So really nice on-card auto. It is 2 of 49. It does go a little bit off there. Um, that's all right, though. I'm, I wasn't too concerned about it. I just thought it looked nice. And the foil on it is actually pretty good, too. A lot of these have the the quote-unquote panini peel, as many people will call it. And that one doesn't have it, so I was very happy with that. Uh, a couple more pickups here. Let's take a look. This is <laughs> – I'm really all over the place with today's pickup video. I kind of think, what do I want to show last? Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. So for the first time ever, I bought a Star Wars card. And I actually got a whole set. So this is not the full 1977 Star Wars set. This is just Series 4. If this was the whole set. This was another trade. And then that would have been absolutely insane. But uh, so this this isn't as crazy, but it's cool to have kind of the whole series there. And if you're familiar with Series 4, there's one card that really jumps out. <laughs> and it is the C3PO error card. Now, I think we all know why this is an error card, but this is one that I don't know why, but there are just like phases where this becomes very popular where I see it all the time on social media, and then it kind of goes away for a little bit, and then it comes back, and there's not even really any Star Wars movies out right now. I guess there's the Obi-Wan show, which is great, by the way. I'm really enjoying that. Uh, but the dealer had a SGC4. And then he had two raw examples, and each of the raw examples would come with one of these uh, sets for the series. So I just, I thought, I was looking at this one, and I thought, you know, the odds of this one also being a four or better, I thought was decent. So I decided that I would go ahead and go for it. If it ends up being a little less, that's fine. Uh, 
I wasn't too concerned about it, but getting the set with it was was a huge bonus. So I don't know what I'll do about this. Maybe I'll find a beater C three PO and put these in a binder. In fact, that's probably I think that might be what I do. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially where I uh, <laughs> where I went to to uh, to get this card. I've, I've been after one of these for a while, so I'm glad that I finally own one. And that one will probably go off in an SGC submission, uh, just so it's authenticated and all that. All right, next up, there's a lot of good stuff to show. So we go from 1970s to this current decade here. Dangerous, Russell Wilson. This is a gold out of origins, a sneaky tough pull. I've wa I watched a lot of origins get open because it's usually one of the first products that comes out for the new our uh, rookie premier guys that actually shows them in their NFL uniforms. I believe it's the first RPAs you get. In pro uniforms this one is one of ten it is a psa nine and a nine on these is exceptional i would say uh you can see the corners on the back here well actually you can't really see it all that well but the corners on the back here are just a little bit soft and that's to be expected with these cards when they it's almost like you have to deal with eight corners instead of four just because of the thickness of the card uh, but this is from the 2020 product, so not this year. I, I think I kind of made it sound like that, but no, it was the previous year, so your, your Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert rookie class. And I know at least in the past years of Origins, especially in the 2021 release, I would see cases and cases at a time before you would come across a gold. And when the boxes were something stupid, like $600 a box this year, I think they're still like 450 which is crazy considering what some of the singles go for. Uh, it, it was just one of those that made a lot of sense. They're just a really sharp looking card. So this is one of those that I'll, I'll put up in the store. And usually how this goes is that when I say I'm going to put it up and we'll see what happens with it, it it's gone within 24 hours. Uh, this one is one that I don't mind holding on to. So this was a, a good one from a guy who I've made several deals with now has become a, a friend in the hobby. So it's always nice to, uh, to hook up and do some deals with him just He's fair. He has good stuff. We have some more tastes, so sometimes the cards that I'm interested in are the ones that he's interested in, too. But I thought that was cool, and he, he caught me a very good deal, did me a solid, so big thank you to him. Uh, man, these last two. This is tough. So this was a bundle deal. I was extremely happy. This was $75 for the pair on these two cards, I believe. If I'm remembering correctly. I don't have my notes in front of me. Uh, Rob Gronkowski Silver from 2018 Prison. One of those, if you know, you know cards. These 18 Silvers are not easy to come by. So was very happy to get that. That was one of those that was in a $10 box, and I'm like, yep, I'll take that. And I bundled it together, so I guess the way you could look at it is that it would essentially that one was free uh, by paying full price for this one here. This is the Horizontal. Autograph from 2021 Tops Transcendent of Reggie Jackson. It is the green or the emerald parallel, number to 15, which usually the green parallels don't necessarily work with the team colors, but it does match up very well here with uh, the Athletics Reggie, which is cool. It's always interesting. I see Tops. I feel like Tops uses him more often in the Yankees uniform. You guys let me know if you've noticed that too. But for some reason, whenever I see Reggie Jackson, I always think like, man, I wonder why they always use him in the Yankees uniform. Because I, I remember like when I was first getting in to, you know, the hobby many moons ago, we're talking, you know, I started collecting cards, hockey cards. It was back in like 2002. Never really took a break from cards after that. Uh, but in 2006 was when I really started getting into baseball. And I remember seeing, you know, Reggie Jackson autographs and most of the time they were with the Yankees and I kind of associated with them with him. But I would say in more recent years, I think it's just because I've been exposed to so many Reggie rookies and have owned several at this point that, I don't know, he's always, he's always an A's guy to me. But when you think of Reggie Jackson, who, what team do you think of? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm curious. Um, uh, I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but but I just did. So, uh, And then the last deal of the day, this was a dealer, and I love working with this dealer because he is 
extremely fair with his prices and then is already willing to give you a discount, especially when you are willing to buy multiple cards. And he, he's a great salesman too, which is a big part of it. I mean, this guy, he knows what he's doing. Uh, I admire him. And I've, I've learned a few tricks from him as well. So I always like going to his table. He's very organized, very neat. And he's got a, a great variety of stuff. He has both vintage and modern. And that is reflective of what I got today. So this was a bit of a combo deal here. And the first one up is a mini Minoso rookie. Now, this is a beater. Let's let's make no bones about it. This is a beater. Uh, and that's fine. I got this at a price that was extremely reasonable. Uh, that guy, I would call it a really good deal. You can see on the back it's got paper loss. And I don't, I don't even need to say that. That's kind of like stating the obvious. It is a little bit miscut on the back too. So I'm more so a front guy. The back is jacked up. I'm, I'm not as concerned about that. And the front, all things considered, is not that bad at the price point that I got it at. Is this the best looking? I'll, I would call this a one. Is this the best looking example of a one with a third party grader? Not, not really, but it's all about, you know, <laughs> it's all about the price point. And to get, to get a 1952 Tops Hall of Famer for a reasonable price, those, those days are kind of gone. A lot of them have gone up a lot, especially when you talk about rookies. Um, Minoso, I, I would say, is the most affordable of the three rookies in that set, him, Wilhelm, and I mean, Eddie Matthews is on a, a different tier from most cards in the hobby, but this one right here, I just I couldn't pass it up. And it was bundled together with this card, and this was one that just it jumped out to me. Like, man, I gotta own this. It's a Joey Votto from Topps Heritage, and this is the uh, refractor version of it. Just fantastic shine here, 2008 Topps Heritage with the 1959 Topps rookie design. Just beautiful card, fantastic shine. It's a little off centered for my liking but a lot of these are off-centered. So they're just beggars can't be choosers. And those types of cards aren't as always readily available. So with that being said, uh, that was my pickups for today. So yeah, a little bit of everything. Let's talk about the show floor. And this show, it, it was pretty much par for the course. There is a lot of Bengals and there's a lot of red stuff. And you go to a show in Cincinnati, that is almost always the case. I say this every time I do a local show on these recap videos, that it is it is difficult to find a city to go to a card show and that has pro sports teams that has as many of the local guys as it is in Cincinnati. I just I, when I go to shows in, in Michigan, I don't I see a lot of Tiger stuff, of course. Uh, when I go to the shows in Indiana, I see the Colts and the Pacers stuff. When I go to Dallas for the Dallas show. That one's a bit different, but you see a fair number of Cowboys and Rangers and Mavericks. But Cincinnati, man, the, the ratio of Cincinnati stuff to non-Cincinnati stuff is, is pretty crazy. So if you are a Cincinnati fan who doesn't live uh, in the city, but you're, you're nearby enough to go to a show, I think it's worth it to stop by some of these shows because you'll find a lot of cards. So uh, that was on the show floor. What was hot and what was not? Not too many people talking about the Reds today from what I saw. I heard a lot of people talking about Joe Burrow. And that is really no surprise. This is a probably the best opportunity to buy Joe Burrow since the start of last season, I would say, before he was coming back from his injury. A lot of people talking about Jamar Chase as well. And naturally, uh <laughs> Naturally, it was it was just one of those things that those are the hottest two players in the Cincinnati area, so why wouldn't people ask about them? What was not hot? This is very interesting to me because today at the show, and I don't know what it is, I, I have a few ideas, but if I go to a show on the weekend of a big release, so NT, Immaculate, Optic, Topps Chrome, or even as I'm going to say now, prism, prism of any kind, there are always a variety of singles there to choose from right away. I don't think I saw a single 2021 prism football card. 
Now, I know it just released the day before I recorded this video. I went to this show technically for hobby. Some people got it a few days early. But that hasn't really stopped me in the past from seeing this type of stuff at shows. So that was odd to me because normally I, I don't see it, or I normally do see it, I should say. And nobody was asking about it. Nobody was asking about boxes of it. I didn't even see boxes of it. And to me, the most obvious reason would be is that it is extremely overpriced at thirteen hundred dollars a box. I will I will go out and say that there's really no bones about it. It is one of those products that seems like it is only for group breaks right now. And even then, it's it's tough to justify it sometimes, depending on what style of break you're getting into. But regardless, uh, maybe that will change over the coming weeks when people get in their group break results. But so far from what I'm seeing, there was just no offerings. I, I saw plenty of Phoenix football, limited football, the, the products that have come out in recent months. I saw plenty of that. No prism. Uh, and then baseball wasn't too hot. There wasn't as much baseball, which is very weird because this is typically, I see a lot of baseball here, uh, but it felt like it was very football and basketball heavy, which was different. So there were people asking about baseball, but overall it just, it didn't seem to be as hot, which was weird because we're in the midst of baseball season. Part of it might be because, well, the team here sucks. Uh, they've been good lately, but uh, the really prominent hobby players haven't been as good. So. That was what was hot and what was not. Let's uh, let's wrap it up here with the takeaways from the show. And I feel like it would be a broken record of me to kind of go over the points I initially had for uh, my takeaways, but we'll just keep reiterating it. Uh, the one good thing I like to start off was that there were a lot of deals to be had and a lot of great conversations to be had. It didn't feel like I approached any table where the dealer was trying to milk every single dollar out of me that they possibly could. It, it felt like a lot of the transactions that I was witnessing for the most part and the ones that I was involved in kind of knew that as a buyer, I'm trying to get things for the lowest price. And as a dealer, they're trying to get the most for their cards and then vice versa when I would be the one who was in the position of selling. And it seemed like there was a lot of understanding a lot of trying to make it work for both sides more than what i'm used to at a lot of shows and i just i hope that is something that continues because it makes it so much easier and you have so many more open and honest conversations where you can go hey that is uh you know you know this is what i'm thinking on this this is why i, I don't like this this is why i like this so i greatly enjoyed that something i didn't like <laughs> uh, he, you know, there wasn't anything that like really rubbed me the wrong way at this show. And a lot of times that is the case with the same thing I didn't like. I do try to put like one thing out there that I noticed that maybe I wasn't quite as fond of. So I'll go ahead and put this one out there is there was a lot of retail there, but it was at the same prices that you would find now on target.com or in local big box stores. And to me, that doesn't make much sense because these guys who are selling this wax, I highly doubt have any kind of allocations on retail. And if they are at the prices that they're charging, I can't imagine they're making too much just from different people who I've spoken to. So it's very curious to me. I don't know if they just, if they're trying to flip it from retail and they've kind of waved the white flag because a lot of it is newer stuff. Like it was, it was the new Bowman, uh, the, the 2021 basketball products, not the Chronicles draft, but I saw a lot of Don Russ today. So I don't know what it is, uh, but I kind of thought that the days of seeing retail wax that wasn't extremely special at shows was over, but it, it seems to be alive and well. Um, I don't know how much longer that will last, but I think that's a trend that the majority of people are, are kind of over at this point. So let's wrap up with something that I liked. I kind of, you know, had a two for one with the first one where good deals and good conversations, usually I split those up. Um, but I, one thing I noticed is that when I was showing my cards to, uh, to dealers, I'll never forget this. This is a little aside, but at the national last year, there was a dealer who I was going to buy some cards from and he was looking to buy as well. So he asked me if I had anything to buy. So, I mean, he was the one who initiated it with me and I'm like, yeah, I got stuff. If you want to take a look, 
And he basically told me, yeah, I'm not interested in any of this crap. Now, did he say it exactly like that? No, but he did use the word crap. And <laughs> even if someone brings me a card at a show if I'm set up and I have absolutely no interest in it, I am not going to sit there and call your card crap. It, it means something to you and you're trying to sell it to me and I'm not going to demean your card. And when that guy said that to me, I instantly was done. I was not going to make a deal with him just because I, I don't, why, why do you say that? Why would you say that? Like you can think that of course, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. You guys can let me know in the comments, but uh, a lot of dealers who I approached today were, were giving me compliments on my cards. They seemed to be taking an interest and they were asking about the cards, whether it was to just learn something on their own or maybe to get an idea of where my head was at on certain cards, but nobody really like talking down the cards. Not that that happens that often. Usually it's just kind of looking through like, no, I can't do anything with these or I might be interested in these, but a lot of people like really actively engaged and, and complimenting the cards. And it makes me feel good as someone who's looking to sell. So like, I guess that's a small tip if you're someone who sets up or you're looking to set up is that if someone approaches you with something, you know, be polite about it. Uh, you never know that maybe they'll come back around and they'll buy something from your table. You, you don't want to burn bridges. Uh, I think that's a, a good overarching theme. So let's wrap it up there. I rambled on for long enough as always, but I was over the moon with this show. And uh, I hope the rest of the summer is like this, especially the national and AC. So until next time, guys, take care, stay safe, be kind.